Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Food for Thought Live, episode I don't even know anymore, which is the best thing about it. We've had so many wonderful guests. I'm losing count, and we're going to have even more. I'm going to announce a few guests at the end of this evening for you, so you've got some uh, dates for your diary. A um, couple of things. We, we ended the, the, last, uh, the last broadcast talking a lot uh, with Rula Lenska, as you'll remember, about education and about the, the need. That's the key. That's the, that's the greatest hope we've got is the uh, education of younger generations. So they come through with, with compassion and empathy for animals and, and we can change the world in that way. And with that in mind, I think I mentioned uh, on that broadcast that I was speaking to some school kids on Thursday. So a friend of mine that I used to, uh, he used to act, we did a, a couple of theatre productions together back in the day. Um, he's now a, a deputy head at a school, my friend Ross Mitchell. I don't know if he's watching, but if he is, I want to say a huge thank you to Ross, who on the day I had to call Mr. Mitchell, which I did, which I was quite impressed with, uh, because of his kids also being on the Zoom call. And I got the opportunity to speak to them about the Born Free Foundation, the Good Heart Animal Sanctuaries and the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation. And now those kids have been split into three groups and will be presenting back to me and some special guests on Wednesday on another Zoom broadcast. And they were all so engaged and they were all so enthusiastic and it was just wonderful. And I wanted to share that with you because we talked so much about education and the need for it. And that was something that I had the opportunity to do fortuitously since the last broadcast. So I really wanted to just mention that to, to kind of encourage us all to keep that up. And uh, you, you'd have seen the post from Joanne Bartholomew at Born Free uh, towards the end of that, that broadcast with Ruler, where she said, do reach out to Born Free. And the same is true of many of the other charities. Reach out to them and, and they'll provide you with uh, learning resources, digital learning resources that you can give to kids, to schools. It, it's a fantastic way for us to spread our message. Um, another way to spread our message is, is petitions. And one of the things that I wanted to quickly cover before I introduce my wonderful guest for this evening is there's a thing on Facebook a lot of you will have heard me talk about where I always avoid putting external links on any post that I put on Facebook whether it's a video or a, a photo or anything for the simple reason that that messes with the algorithms so if you put something on Facebook and it doesn't have an external link you'll you'll get a whole lot more people will see that than if you put an external link simply because Facebook doesn't want people to leave Facebook so the algorithms work to your advantage if you don't have an external link. The problem with that is that then if you have a, a petition that you want signing, like the one I shared last night, very few people see it. So I'll regularly post something on Facebook and get four, 500 plus responses to it. And with the petition that I put on last night, which is important, I got about 50. So it's about 10 times less. And that's just indicative of the fact that those algorithms are tinkered with by Facebook. So with that in mind, I wanted to say to you guys that I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to interrupt the flow of this evening, but I am going to share into the broadcast this evening the link to a, a couple of petitions, and you'll also find at the very top of my Facebook page uh, the petition for a family of foxes down in Worthing in West Sussex where there's some development work going on and this poor family of foxes are at risk, and it's supposed to be a preserved conservation area. So it's one of those real cruel twists of fate which shouldn't be allowed to happen and we could potentially stop it from happening so i wanted to just mention that to you guys as well also just for your own sake if you're ever sharing into facebook keep in mind that as soon as you put an external link you're going to get a lot less traffic coming your way because facebook will just show it to less people so that's worth keeping in mind so what about tonight well as well as possibly a, a surprise visit from from you know who um who's not here at the moment but if she does show up i'm going to show you the position of the the, the bowl of nuts, the plate of nuts, in fact, is on the floor right beside me. So hopefully we'll have a surprise visit. Anyone who hasn't seen any of this before is going to be wondering what the hell I'm talking about right there. But let's not tell them. Let's let them be surprised. Um, so before I introduce tonight's guest, who has a resume so long I couldn't possibly list all the accolades and who I adore and many of you do and who has created means of us all helping, one of which is one of the most powerful films I've ever seen called Gods in Shackles. With my guest's permission, I'm going to open this evening with a 30-second trailer of Gods in Shackles. 
So allow me to uh, to show you that before we uh, introduce our guest. So stand by. Sangeeta Aya. What a legend. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me just uh, stop that noise from happening in the background. No. Sangeeta, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Well, thank you for hosting this. And I just want you to know how much I love, respect, and admire you for the amazing work that you continue to do by bringing people who have such wealth of knowledge and information. And you had the foresight to do it. And I can't wait for the release of your documentary, Food for Thought, because that is also animal related. And so I'm just honored and just proud to be your friend. I just, I love you dearly. And I, I really also welcome everyone everybody and um, I'm excited uh, you know just for what's in store for us likewise and, and speaking of welcome everybody uh, there there are so many comments already it's lovely to see so many people already and actually ahead of our broadcast there were so many beautiful comments people really do deeply admire and respect and love you for what you do myself included um, gods in shackles being just one of those things and Gods in Shackles, guys, you know, I apologize. I know some of you guys, I can see from your comments that you, you've you already seen something that's brought you to tears and that you had to turn away because you couldn't watch. And I and I know, I know, you know I know. Um, that documentary trailer, in fact, there's, there's a longer seven-minute version, which we're going to give you the link to, which I urge you to watch or share. Even And I understand, you guys know I understand if you can't, if you ca if you can't watch it because it hurts you too much i understand that and that's not a problem and the reason it's not is because you're already engaged and those things hurt and you can't unsee them so i understand that but other people need to see it and simply because it's thanks to someone like sangeeta and the work she's done with gods in shackles even the trailer alone will stop people from naively riding on the back of an elephant or going to a cultural religious festival where they see elephants and they think it's glamorous and they start taking photographs it's something that we cannot and mustn't contribute to. And Sangeeta has given us the tools to spread that message far and wide. Speaking of which, Sangeeta, just give us a sense of how far that documentary has gone, because aside from the fact that you've won numerous international awards, tell us a couple of, a couple of examples of those. And, but also, I know, you know you've got some numbers in terms of how many people in various places, in particular India, had visibility of that film. Yeah, and so thank you for that's a good question. And mostly it's in Kerala that I had been screening and the movie received such, um, you know, um, uh, exposure because it was first screened uh, at the Kerala Legislative Assembly where you have the member of the members of the parliament who convene and decision makers who have actually seen this happen. Uh, there are lots of people who have seen in, in places like states like Karnataka, in New Delhi, uh, in Tamil Nadu, you know, all of these places where they use uh, captive elephants and they exploit them behind the veil of culture and religion. But to make any change in terms of, you know, what to do next, if we are at that threshold, we are at that turning point where things are happening because we also presented a lot of changes in the Kerala captive elephant management guidelines with the, which the government has been implementing additionally the chief wildlife warden of Kerala he is a really wonderful man he has been incredibly supportive we have conducted numerous numerous workshops for the forest department the police department Yes, sensitization is so important. And because of that, they created this wildlife 
uh, crime unit in Kerala, and they are now starting to implement that. And I have heard, I don't know how true this is, that you know there are petitions to even have elephants banned uh, from being paraded in festivals. If that comes to reality, and if Gods and Shackles has done anything at all, then that would be like, that would be ideal, you know, that would be ideal. So there's a, it's gained a lot of exposure, but, uh, and you exposed it in London. You remember that, you know, at the Royal Geographic Society on the fateful day when you had the, when we had the terror attack, but we still went ahead and we did it. And because of people like you and, you know, others like Maureen, Amy Schroff and all these people, we have been able to expose it in so many places around the world. Absolutely. And rightly so. And by the way, guys, um, I know a lot of you will find even the trailer painful, as you've said, but Giles, my legendary sidekick here, has uh, has already found where you can get um, Gods in Shackles on Amazon. So please do uh, and even gift it to somebody else if you can't bear to watch it, because this message needs to be out there. And believe me, it's an incredible film. So the screening that Sangeeta mentioned that we hosted at the Royal Geographical Society with a very, very kind um, assistance of the Born Free Foundation, um, I did that for the simple reason that I watched the seven minute trailer. Sangeeta and I had never met. I was invited to the screening in Edinburgh, which was due to happen and saw the trailer. And, and subsequently, as I think I mentioned in the broadcast with Rula that, um, Sangeeta was unable to travel due to an injury. And subsequently we hosted a screening in London and it was all because of that seven minute trailer, which is so impactful, so powerful, so moving. Absolutely, it's going to bring you to tears and other people too. And I'm seeing some beautiful comments, you know, Gabrielle, for example, I know I, I feel your, the shame you feel for the species we're part of. I understand that, but you don't need to be ashamed because you're a wonderful person. And, and I know that from what you've written. And we need to get the, this kind of message out to other people. And in just 30 seconds that you've just seen or seven minutes or the movie itself, which is an hour and a half long and brilliant. We can get that message to people. So please do share it. It's really important. Sangeeta, tell me, it was on um, a, a channel in India, which I, the name of which I can't remember, but the viewership yeah. of that channel. Tell us the number of that, the, the, the viewers of that channel. Yeah, important. I even forgot about it because it's been screened in so many places, but that is so important. 800 million viewership in this uh, state-run channel called Doordarshan. Uh, but before we go any further, I want to thank Winnie Laskowski, who really, really worked so hard to try and bring this to Edinburgh. And I felt so bad that I had to cancel it the last minute. Uh, and uh, so many people who contributed towards the making of the film, like I can't even name all of them because because they were in the thousands. The whole world came together. Without you guys, we couldn't have done it. Similarly, like how you're doing for the Food for Thought, you know, without the support of people out there who are who are caring and compassionate, we can't do the work that we're doing because I don't earn a salary, you know, and it's not even about how I survive. It's about what right. I can do and dedicate my volunteer time to help the elephants, you know? So. Absolutely, I do know. And if you look at the bottom of your screen, Sangeeta, you'll see a message from Winnie, yes. who's been a faithful supporter. And she, as you said, was instrumental in pulling that Edinburgh screening together, which through circumstance couldn't go ahead. No. But Winnie has been absolutely tireless in her support of not just you, but everything that I'm doing with this, this broadcast series. And uh, uh, Winnie, we adore you. Thank you for everything you do. You're, you're amazing. And, and Winnie's a great example of those unsung heroes. There's so many of those, so many of you, uh, out there doing all this work, which is exactly what it's about, because yeah. without that, gods in shackles and things like it don't get seen. Without yeah. this, you know, without this, and, and, and you know, that school thing that I was just telling you about, that what was so beautiful about it was the theme of their week was the ripple effect. Uh -huh. And that's exactly what we were talking about with the school kids, and that's exactly what this is. And this is the the same exact thing that will happen if you share this broadcast if you share the links that we're we're posting giles is, is put, kindly putting up into the comments so that you can actually click those links we'll be sharing some petitions with you and it that ripple effect is is real and winnie you know again you, you you're a huge um huge fundamental uh, and instrumental part of that ripple effect for sure shining example 
shiny example. Uh, as are the Born Free Foundation, by the way, who uh, I have a message for you from uh, Mr. Will Travers, who can't be on the broadcast this evening, but sends his love and best wishes. Um, oh, okay. And uh, and I know that Virginia is hoping to watch this evening. So what oh, very well might be. And if you are, Virginia, hello, and we love you. And, uh, of um, course, and I need to say that too, because, you know, every time there's something that happens, I'm like, Will and Virginia, what do we do? I need your help, please, please. And, and there's not a time that Will doesn't take a second to respond. He is so humble. And same with Virginia. Like, and and I was connected to them through who? Through Winnie. You know. So there we go again. The connection, right? And so yeah. So I really appreciate whatever support the Born Free had given. And I, you know, I I just admire the work that they do. Likewise, likewise. Um, good evening to Anita, who uh, has just put a lovely message on uh, yeah. on the comments for you there, Sangeeta, which I've shared on screen. Yes. Lovely to have you join us from Vienna. It's really wonderful how this broadcast is spreading globally. You know, we always have people from across the world, and it's lovely to hear where you guys are watching from. So do let us know if you're uh, if you're somewhere um, exciting and uh, well, anywhere is exciting, of course, because what a what a gift life is. Um, and actually. I'm going to just share this again. Giles has shared a comment in the comment section. So this is clickable, don't forget. Um, so after the event, forget, save that and um, you'll, you'll find more information about the film and about Sangeeta. Um, so I've had a, you guys know, I don't rehearse these things. Um, and Sangeeta and I haven't. We've just, we, we got on to this broadcast half an hour before we went live, but we were, we were old friends, so we were catching up. And we haven't planned anything. And and Sangeeta, I hope that you don't mind me throwing you this curveball, but I'm going to say share a message, a, a, a question that's come through from Colleen. Okay. Have there been any positive changes in Sri Lanka? And I know there was one very positive change just recently. Yeah, I uh, frankly, I haven't stayed in contact with what's happening in Sri Lanka, and I'm sorry to say that, but um, what we did was we did a massive screening in Sri Lanka, and the state-run television channel also screened Gods in Shackles in 2018. And ever since then, the awareness has been incredible. But for me to come and tell you that specific changes have taken place, I don't have anything specific because changes, I mean, change takes ages. What we are witnessing right now has is a buildup of over so many decades and we cannot expect change to happen immediately as much as we all want to see changes right now but we just can't we have to and i know for me too patience is running out because i'm like come on stop it enough but we can't do that because we all live in a democratic world and we need to really take a step back and realize that these cultural things and these kinds of you know uh behaviors and misguided myths have been building up over so many decades and even centuries. And so it's going to take us time to educate them, create awareness and let them decide, is this what our God, is this what, you know, our temples want us to do by harassing these animals whom we call God. So unfortunately I don't have like a specific answer at this point. I remember a couple of weeks ago, we connected on the subject of a, of that elephant that had been in captivity for about 40 years and has recently secured release to a sanctuary. And that was in Sri Lanka. So, I'm, And Cher was involved in that one, wasn't she? I know she was quite actively involved. So there are positives happening. And it's, as Sangeeta says, it's it's a slow process and it's one step at a time. But you can rest assured nothing happens unless we all keep our foot on the gas yeah. or the electric car pedal, let's say. Um yeah. Um, so absolutely. Yeah. I think it's, um, th there are good things happening, Colleen, in, in Sri Lanka and more yeah. will happen if we continue yeah. with this momentum. Um, yeah. and I think you're talking about Carvin, uh, Carvin, he Carvin, was, yeah. yeah, he was actually, um, bought from Sri Lanka, taken to Pakistan. And now because of people like Anika Sleem, Diana Manoz, of course, sure. And all of these people, they are wonderful. But with, again, it comes down to the grassroots movement that 
Diana and Anika Slim, and I think it was Danielle. Uh, I can't remember her last name, uh, but she passed away a couple of years back. These three people, they came together. They launched this grassroots campaign. They had massive Twitter storms, email storms, and that caught the attention of Sher. And so that's how we we do that, right? We it's, right. it's it, now all glory to Sher. Thankfully, she paid attention and she did this. But if the grassroots movement had not been launched it wouldn't have happened quite right absolutely these people just lend their weight to it exactly. and um as much as anything else um these broadcasts are about connections we've said this from the very beginning it's about connecting people giving us all a sense of community while we cannot under normal circumstances have that sense of community no protest marches no getting together and um allison has just summarized that beautifully with saying that she's met connected with so many compassionate people on these live broadcasts and that that's exactly what it's designed to do so thank you Alison for that gorgeous feedback Sangeeta we've got so much to talk about but you know what I'm really interested to know mm. how did you get into this I know you've always had a passion for animals but how have you become this this goddess of conservation that you are what, what, what I've I know you've shared the story with me before but I'd love for you to share the story about how you became so determined to help yeah, so uh, I mean, goddess is too much for me to handle. Maybe I'm just a humble, um, you know, a humble uh, instrument that is being used to make this happen. So, but I thank you for your compliment. Well, uh, humility is a well known trait of all goddesses. So, you know, <laughs> not convincing me, but carry on. I love you. Okay, so um, when I was about three, three and a half years old, my grandparents used to take me to this amazing temple in. Kerala, which is where I was born and raised, and I fell in love with a, a wonderful young bull elephant who was shackled and tethered, and um, I would ask my grandmother, which she shared with, with me when I became a teenager, she said, Sangeeta, even at the age of three and a half, four, you would ask me, why does that elephant have shackles on his leg and I don't have shackles on my leg? So my sweet grandma, she went out and she bought anklets for me. So, and she said, look, now you have it too. And I said, no, but they're their uh, shackles are, are tight, like the legs are tied together and mine are not. And she said, um, um, I became speechless when you said that. And even now when I think of it, I feel like my destiny had been determined when I was a child. And um, then, of course, life took over. I moved to Canada. Um, you know, I've been here for 30, 30 odd years. And, uh, you know, the thought of elephants would always you know, come and haunt me, but, you know, you kind of move on and keep doing other things until one day I was in India for my father's first death anniversary. And I've written a book about this whole thing, which is going to be published sometime in the fall. I found a publisher to Hay House India is publishing my book. And I've narrated this story like, um, thank you, Colleen. I'm not a goddess, but I appreciate that. Um, it, so, um, yeah, so it's so in that I'm talking about how um, this whole thing happened because when I went for my father's first death anniversary, instead of going to Mumbai, something happened to me, and I said, "No, I got to go to this hill station. It's a place called Uti. It's a beautiful, dynamic place, and I had my favorite uncle there." So I phoned him. I said, "Instead of Mumbai, I'm coming to see you." And on my way to his house, I asked him, "Do you know a friend by the name of blah blah blah?" And he said, yes. And I said, call him. And he's, as it turned out, that friend was returning from, uh, you know, from his tiger census. And it's, I mean, it's so fateful that he would return the same day, that I would be there the same day. It's not a coincidence. I don't think, I think it's divine synchronicity. And it, it so happened that uh, I want, I asked him, can you take me to see elephants? Because you know I love elephants. And he said that um, I can take you. And as we were just planning, uh, this was to Kerala. Like we were in Tamil Nadu, Uti is in Tamil Nadu. And he wanted to take me to Kerala where I was born. And we ended up rescuing a wild elephant. And I said, wow, like there are thousands of people surrounding this bull elephant. Only bulls have tusks, right, for Asian elephants. And um, 
I said, if this had happened in Africa, they would have shot him immediately and butchered the tusks and sold him. But these guys are like, they, they care about these elephants. So at the time, that conservationist friend said, you must come to you must come to the temples and see what's going on over there. And that's how my whole journey began. Uh, and in December 2013, I went to the temples. And what I did was I took a camera with me being a videographer. And what I witnessed there completely shuddered me, shattered me. And I, I was just devastated. I got like 25 hours of footage and I didn't know what to do with it. And then I contacted like a media person, a friend of mine. He said, why don't you launch a crowdsourcing campaign? And the rest, as they say, is history. You know, so that's how it came about. At what point in that story, which is a remarkable and beautiful story, and thank goodness that's the route you decided to take, but at what point in that process did you set up Voice for Asian Elephant Society? Yeah, so Voice for Asian Elephant Society came about after the release of my film. My film was released in uh, June, on exactly on June the 29th, 2016. So here we are four wow. years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe four okay. years to the day. Yeah, almost. Uh, and um, and um, so when that happened, I said, oh my gosh, it's okay to create awareness, but I got to do more than just that. And then evolved all of the projects that, you know, we got involved in, uh, like Project Asian Elephants 101, which is like teaching people like the basics of elef about elephants. They didn't even have the basic knowledge. And, you know, India okay, elephants are supposed to be India's cultural icon, and they had absolutely no knowledge. So that's how this whole journey began. And it's quite incredible. I mean, give us a sense of what the, obviously, I know Gods in Shackles deals very specifically with uh, the issues in Kerala, but give, give people a sense of what that is and, the, and, and those, those um, misguided uh, beliefs and, and, the, and the, the story people were being sold on in terms of why these elephants were being used and, and, and the reality behind it. Yeah, so um, according to Hindu mythology, uh, elephants are considered to be the embodiment of Lord Ganesh. And in the ancient times, elephants were used by the royalties, by the kings and queens to even select kings because elephants are so wise. And of course, there were kings who actually owned elephants but they used to treat their elephants so beautifully like their own family members none of them were shackled they had massive courtyards to wander around and then um, there was another story that happened where you know in kerala about a hundred years ago they had some kind of a festival wherein um you know people from trishur were not allowed to participate in a festival that was taking place somewhere else and so the trishur king his name is saktan tamburan don't even try to pronounce it it's complicated but um, he he said, okay, don't worry, we're going to create our own festivity in Trishur, and that's how Trishur Puram came about. This happened like about a hundred and some odd years ago, and right. Of course, at the time, there were one or two or three or at the most 10 elephants used. But in the 80s, what happened is people in Kerala, many men, mostly men, they traveled to the Middle East and they started minting money. They didn't know what to do with the money. And elephants became a status symbol. It has always been a status symbol. But they said, oh, now we can purchase elephants and we're going to be like royalties. So elephants became almost like a, a backyard thing. And they, they, they are kept in such small areas is not even the basic two acreage plot of land which a single elephant deserves in like small areas it's not even as lo as large as my living room you know and it's just disgusting in the in the appalling conditions they're kept in they they you know they defecate and they urinate in the same place they have foot rot they're constantly fed you know this carryout of palm leaves which is like fibrous and it causes severe constipation many many elephants have died Died because of constipation and many elephants have died because of foot rot TB is infested 25% of Kerala's elephants are they suffer from tuberculosis and it is a zoonotic disease speaking of COVID right it's such a right. zoonotic disease anyway so and so it, it, it zoonotic diseases they spread from animals to humans but they but there's this reverse zoonosis which spreads from humans to elephants as well and so it just creates this unending 
sort of vicious cycle that has to be, you know, that has to be ended. Elephant slavery has to be abolished. Well, and you're, you're taking giant, giant leaps towards that, that very um, thing happening, and which is, which is quite an incredible, uh, an incredible achievement to even have taken steps towards it. You, you touched upon this when you spoke of gods in shackles and you know one of the tangible examples of just how real these steps are that you're taking towards that that reality is the you talked about the the police forces yes. that now have tell us a little bit about that because this is i mean this is real real work that's happening in india right now because of the the, the film that sangeeta created and the work that she's done and the pressure she's maintained throughout all these years tell us about what's happened in the police force there so what happened was in January 2017, okay, I, I was involved in this massive accident on the 9th of January 2019, but prior to that, I had already scheduled uh, a workshop for the police at the police headquarters on the 30th of January. And here I am, you know, sustained a five broken bone fracture on my legs and I was on cast and I, I, I used to, I, I was walking with a walker and, and the police um, chief asked me, do you want to postpone this? I said, no, I'm coming there. Don't, don't postpone. I'm coming there. I went there with the cast and my lawyer, uh, my partner lawyer in Kerala, his name is Hari Raj Madhavan. He's a wonderful animal welfare lawyer. Him and I, we presented a short segment of, of, of Gods and Shackles. In that short segment, eight-minute segments, there were 23 violations. Unbelievable. So I told, I asked the police, did you see all these violations? And do, what do you do about these violations? So we started having this conversation. And by the end of it all, um, actually, even before this whole thing began, uh, I had been meeting with the police chief, Mr. Loknath Bera. He's a wonderful human being being another animal lover. It's all these people that were placed on my path. I met him so many times, like maybe once a week, I'd have to wait for him for hours on end, but it's okay. I waited and he would patiently give me his undivided attention. And at the end of the day, we came up with this idea and he said, I'm going to launch it. So he launched this Wildlife Crime Control Bureau. And because of that, using that Wildlife Crime Control Bureau right now, there, um, you know, you may, everybody has heard about this devastating event wherein this pregnant mm. wild elephant was uh, the victim of the explosives planted in a coconut. It's not a pineapple, by the way, it was coconut. Uh, and it was in Palakkad, it was not in Malapuram. So there were a lot of misinformation also going around. Anyway, um, because of that Wildlife Crime Control Bureau, what he has done is he he's launched this massive uh, uh, sort of transformation of how wildlife and even the captive elephants are going to be, or violations against wildlife and even captive elephants are going to be enforced. So, so because of the relationship that I built with them, because of the education that I continue to provide, it has taken two years, but who cares? It takes a long time. People, you know, they want to see immediate results. It doesn't happen that way. But but it's like you're you're planting the seed, you water the seed, and you nurture it, you fertilize it, and eventually it sprouts and becomes this beautiful plant, which then becomes a tree, and trees, you know, give us fruits, fruit, and so that's what is happening right now. And something that I think a lot of people on this uh, broadcast have already um, alluded to the, the fact that they're very similar. If, if it wasn't already clear to people, if maybe you'd never had the opportunity to hear Sangi to speak before, um, and now you have, and you'll know unequivocally that, 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 that she is overflowing with compassion and empathy and passion for the cause. And yet I know you well enough to know that this, this stuff hurts you. You know, we've had this conversation with a lot of our guests along the way. And, you, you know, you just talked about the fact that it's two years, but who cares? But you, it's not just about the length of time it takes. It's, a, it's the cost to you. The, I, know you I know you go through an enormous amount. We've had conversations about it many times, you know. You, you really have put yourself in, on the front line of a battle where you've had to see and witness some of the horrors that we, we're here to talk about addressing and, and bringing an end to. But 
and I don't want to go too far down that road because it's going to get emotional for everybody. But what I do want to talk about is the fact that what you're up against, in, and, and, and I mean this with the greatest of respect to the Indian nation, but just stating a fact that culturally speaking, the challenge for you having achieved what you've achieved is, is all the greater. Because it's not just the fact that you're up against animal cruelty, you're up against a culture where, I'm sorry about the siren if you can hear it, Hopefully it's not for me and we can continue. No, they've gone. Um, um, society, no question. Exactly. And it's just, a, it's just a statement of fact. So you've been up against that as well as the obvious horrors of what you've been trying to address. You've, I mean, you, know, you've, you, you really are in a, in a situation where it's not just a given. You, 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 I know you've had to really maneuver and navigate that give us a sense of how how complicated that's been over the you know over the course of the work you've been doing yeah it's i i can't even wrap my mind around it to begin with because i just think of moving forward moving forward and i what i do is i the way, I, I can just tell you the way i deal with this is um you know, I do feel frustrated. I do suffer from depression and it's an ongoing thing that I deal with. But just because I am depressed, I don't turn around and say, it's too much for me to handle. I am too depressed. But I, I personally, for me, I'm talking from me, is that I would be selfish to say, this is too depressing for me. Just think of what the poor elephants are going through. So I journal a lot. I start my day with a prayer and a meditation. There is not a single day that goes without meditation I go through anger I go through frustration I sometimes lash it out on people on even the Facebook who pass ignorant comments and I apologize if I've offended some of them because it, it may be ignorant in my eye because I know too much but they are not ignorant so I need to be more compassionate even towards them so one of the things that I'm learning is we cannot um, we cannot curb we cannot curb cruelty and hatred by spreading hatred and anger you see um, we have to curb it only by spreading love um, you know um, the way i navigated through the system then is because angels like you were placed on my path even in india so for instance i would not know who to communicate with what to talk even you know i do speak malayalam but it's not as you know beautiful as they speak but i do get along with a lot of people and somehow like i have so many media colleagues who to, to me, it's like my voice ampli amplified what they want to say, because as journalists, they cannot say what I can say. You see, I used to be a journalist, a broadcast journalist at that. I know the challenges that they go through. And so they were so supportive. And one of my journalist friends, his name is Dinesh, he connected me with the speaker of the General Assembly. And that speaker then connected me with the chief minister. And I've met the chief minister so many times. I've met uh, the speaker so many times. You got to meet and meet and meet and meet and meet. And you go there and you sit there at nine o'clock in the morning. You end up meeting them at eight o'clock at night. You just don't leave. I just put on my meditation and I listen to just remain calm. And then I, I, every hour I'll keep asking, is this, can we go and meet him? Can we go meet him? Can we go right. meet him? But you just do whatever the hell it takes, right? You just have to get the job done. That's my only thing is, how are you going to end the cruelty against elephants? It's as simple as that. If I have to stay there for one, one day, it's okay. They are shackled for, for their life. For me to wait for them for one day to meet these people, who cares? Uh, well, a lot of people wouldn't go to the lengths you go to, but I'm happy to say that it's been recognized, okay. the lengths that you go to. Tell us about this moment right oh, here. Oh, yeah. Wow, you had to show that picture. Well, that was a very emotional <laughs> moment. <laughs> that is actually the former president of India, Mr. Pranab Mukherjee. And um, I was nominated for the Nari Shakti Puraskar, which is like the Woman Power Award uh, by the Women and Child Development, Ministry of Women and Child Development. I had the distinct privilege to be recognized uh, among the 33 women out of the billions of, I mean, out of the millions of people, I would say, or the 
many millions of women in India. So it was for women making a difference in India. And I was deeply humbled and actually surprised and shocked. I'm like, what? I spoke against your culture and I'm getting this award. <laughs> and so um, it was kind of a bittersweet. Um, it was actually a sweet thing. It was also a little bit bitter because I do have some anger towards the culture. And it's that same culture that recognized me, you know, on a, on, on a certain level. So it was just a really bittersweet moment for me. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. And I'm sure there have been many. And I have to, I think it's important to say, you know, as, as we've talked about in many of these uh, broadcasts, you know, the, there are heroes on the ground in India too. You've mentioned some of them already, um, including the, the, the Minister of Forestry or whatever, whoever it was that you spoke about. That, and you also have the chief warden, right and you've got the uh, uh, absolutely and you, and you have your your uh, animal welfare lawyer and the various people on the ground there there's plenty of them yeah. and let's not forget yeah. one of the greatest quotes which can i i know guides me and probably guides many many millions of people in in their work with animals is the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by its treatment of animals and that was gandhi yeah. and you know i think it's really important to 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 reflect on that as well as when we talk about these challenges, I, I, I mentioned the challenges simply because of the fact that they're there, they're real and, yeah. it, and, and they need to be circumnavigated. And I think it also me means that you need to be um, recognized for the fact that you're, you're not just doing the obvious work. You're doing a, an awful lot more work that goes on in the background. And I know that that takes its toll, but um, what, what, I mean, what an incredible journey already. What's the, what, what are you, intending to do i know you've got some things you want to talk about for the for the short-term future what's um what's coming up yeah so much so many things are coming up actually so what i discovered uh you know, over the years. So I, my whole thing with elephants began in some, sometime in 2013, but I'm realizing that the plight of wild elephants is dire or more dire than the plight of captive elephants. There are approximately 2,500 captive elephants, but there are 27,000 wild elephants. Of course, it pales in comparison to the population, which is 1.38 billion in India. And, you know, just to give you some a context. India has three times more the number of people than the United States, and it is three times smaller in size compared to the United States. So you can just comprehend the intense right. competition for space that goes on. And this has triggered human wild human elephant conflict more than anything. And because of that, within between uh, March the 24th and today, something like 25 elephants have been brutally murdered. They have been murdered because through different things. I mean, the, this, the thing that we discussed earlier about, you know, the, the Kerala pregnant elephant uh, consuming this coconut, sorry, I just have to. I get it. I get it. It's something that I wanted to ask you about, and I know it's going to be tough for you to talk about. We talked about this uh, with a couple of guests so far, because just while you catch your breath, there's, there's an alarming, uh, there's an there's an alarming pattern that seems to be forming, which we're trying to we're trying to establish whether it's just the fact that we're seeing more of it now, as in it's becoming visible to us now, or it was ha and it was happening all along, or if something is happening right now during this crazy period of the pandemic that's that's actually causing more of it to happen because we're seeing it across the world um here included right here in my own town you guys know i shared a, a, a horrific request for information for the identity of a jogger who kicked us a baby swan and killed it you know we're just oh. i mean we're we, we're dealing with these kinds of things, I'm, and I know I'm sorry, guys. I know that we, we talk about the fact that we have to we have to go into the darkness sometimes to know about these things and to address them. Sangeeta is the epitome of that. Oh, thank um, you. So, so I think it's 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 tough. It's tough, but it's like what? So, what's happened lately? And I've seen your posts on on social media that yeah. you've had this incredible sudden surge. But yeah. surge. What what's happening? Why? So it's a combination of uh, more exposure and uh, 
you know, and more murders happening. But it's it's again a vicious cycle. So let me let me try and disentangle what is going on. So you have, like I was talking about, the human population, right? Uh, what is happening is that due to this COVID crisis, many poor people have been have been feeling abandoned by the government. We may all, you may or may not have heard of the migrant crisis. And what this migrant crisis is, is that there are a lot of people from villages who had actually traveled to cities to you know, to work in the cities. And they all were forced to return to the villages because everything was closing down and they were not provided proper, you know, facility to be moved. Many of them walked all the way miles and miles and miles on and many of them died along the way. And there's this significant anger, tremendous anger towards the government. So there are elements that are seeking revenge I know, I know it is unfounded that what the hell did the elephants do to you? Go take your, go take your anger on, on, on the government, not on these innocent animals, right? But they just don't know how to channel their energies. They just don't. And I am not condoning. In fact, I am angry. I am livid. But we have to understand what's going on so we can come up with solutions that would be productive, right? And so you have that happening. And then you have people who are encroaching into their habitats. I have visited forests inside the the dense core regions where people have illegally planted plantations of, you know, uh, rubber and banana plantations and all these things. How the hell did they do that? How could they get inside and do that? And then you have people living a along the forest fringes. So inside the forest, you have people who have established and occupied and invaded the jungles. Outside, you have people living here. And elephants are squeezed from everywhere. They have nowhere to go. Forest yeah. departments are squeezed because the government Governments, the state governments are not affording them enough budget. And as a result, they don't have manpower. They don't have finances. It's easy for me. I used to also blame the forest department. You guys are fools. You guys are that, that, that. All of us feel that way. But when you are on the ground, you understand that the forest department, at least many of them that I have met, they have good intentions. They want to do good things. They just cannot. This is where we step in and say, okay, let us do this. And with regards to these villagers who are angry, we have to make sure, yes, stop producing children, no questions asked, right? But how do we teach them to do that, right? We can't tell them, you gotta stop producing children right now. There are religious and political ramifications we will face if we went there with this authoritarian mentality. We have gotta do this in a very methodical manner. Additionally, the problem is, it's like, you know, we want everything to happen now, but we have to put ourselves in their shoes. If somebody came and told you, you gotta do this now, how would you react? Right. So there's so many. It's a vicious cycle. And then you have the government that have encroached into the forest land, building railways, roadways. So where do these right. elephants go? Right. And there's big projects I know underway with regards to corridors of land. We see this in oh, Africa yes. as well with corridors of land to connect the areas that are available. Because, of course, these animals are migratory animals and they'll they'll wander thousands of miles, never mind hundreds, over the course of their, an average year even. And um, tell us a little bit about how that's going. That's so beautiful. Thank you for just melting me off a little bit. <laughs> I was getting so passionate and intense. And Dan just comes and yeah. pours water. <laughs> <laughs> that's what so, I'm here for. <laughs> you're, you're awesome. I love you just for that. Um, and so the Kerala Corridor Project, thanks to each and every one of our supporters, is fully funded. And it's not just funded. You see, you can have all the money, but you need to make sure that you transfer the money legitimately using proper channels, you know, going through the, um, you know, Foreign Currency Registration Act, which is the FCRA uh, Act uh, in India. And we have actually uh, partnered with a grassroots organization and I'm going to make this announcement officially after we, you know, do all of the stuff that we need to do on the Facebook page because... <clears throat> 
if we do anything prematurely, there are a lot of detractors who would come and try to harass them. I don't want that to happen to them. So a lot of times I don't share a lot of information on the Facebook page or even in our secret page because I don't want to put the people on the ground in jeopardy because the minute they know, minute the detractors know that they are collaborating with me, they'll go and harass them because they many, I'll be honest with you, there are many people that are, I don't want to use the word scared, but they, they're kind of intimidated by my aggressiveness and I will be aggressive to make this happen, but I am not, I am not disrespectful i am assertive more than aggressive and so they are afraid and terrified of how far i will go and get risking my own life nothing will stop me they know that so what they will do is they will attack the detractors on the ground so i hesitate to tag people with whom i collaborate or say anything much on the facebook but people who are collaborating with us on an individual level, they will get to know what's happening. And so what we are doing right now, Dan, is we are creating coalition, a coalition. And I have met so many wonderful people from across different parts of the world. I've talked to uh, Anne, Anne, who just joined us from Vienna, Anita, actually, excuse me, not Anne, Anita from Vienna. And it's such a beautiful way how her and I met that in and itself is a story with Heike, with, uh, uh, Iris and all these people I have shared I've, with Radha, with Laureen, and I've, I'm, I'm sharing it with my board. So we're creating this coalition and we are structured. I'm going to meet Maria Mosman and uh, uh, Joanne Ibbotson sometime next week. So we're all collectively coming together and saying, how can we take all the information that I've gathered and provide something productive and make a difference on the ground through the grassroots organization. So that is still like underway. And I'm going to launch a campaign in the month of July to help the people on the ground. And our job is to empower the people who live even inside the forest. We, we take care of them. So then they will care for what we say. And in return, they will hopefully understand where we're coming from and follow what we are suggesting. Right. Because it'll be a win-win situation. Because we're going to explain to them and say, look, you're living here. People are dying. Elephants are dying. It's not good for you. It's not good for them. How about if we started moving you away a little bit? We take care of you. Stop producing children. Uh, and we'll take care of you. So, yeah. <laughs> we're working on that. <laughs> and it's incredible work. And I, ga I gather from what you were saying that it sounds like it's with the, with the delicate nature of the the relationships you need to um, maintain there. It's, is it somewhere where there currently isn't information? A lot of people have been asking where they can see information about this particular work. Is I'm, I'm assuming that's kind of under wraps right now and it will be released subsequently. July. 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 Yeah. There you go, guys. So you'll find that then. However, what is out there now, I know that you've, um, you've got a petition going. Exactly. Um, you yourself created on change.org. Yeah, exactly. And usually I don't create petitions. I don't because I don't want to offend anybody because you need to work with the government. But I'm also going to write a letter to the prime minister and the president sometime today and tomorrow. And we're going to dispatch right. it. Yeah, go ahead. about the now, No, 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 that's fine. I'm just I'm just going to share. I'm going to del I've deliberately scrolled down because I know, I know that a lot of the, our viewers are very sensitive. And, and there is a there is a, a photograph of one of the, the, the elephants that's unfortunately no longer with us um it's not a it's not a gruesome shot but it is a dead elephant and it's and that's that's awful enough however i just wanted to show you this uh, this petition site and i'm now going to share it as i speak you'll see a comment appear in the chat from me or it'll look like it's food for thought i guess and there it is that's the petition but i will warn you as i said when you click on that you won't be able to avoid seeing this photograph that doesn't make the photograph the the, the petition uh, any less important and as Sangeet has just been saying you know for all of the death threats that she's had for all of the years that it's taken for all of the uh, the challenges she's faced and all the darkness she's had to immerse herself in none of it stopped her so I beg you sign that petition and uh, we need to get it to a million signatures it's six six thousand and some right now we need a whole lot more than that um, so you'll find that link in the chat for this uh, for this uh, conversation right now and Dan, I also want to say that 
I am going to print out the petition and each and every comment and I'm going to personally, I commit to personally mailing it to the Prime Minister and to the Forest Minister and the President. I will personally do it and I will, I will post the envelope and everything on my Facebook page when we hit the one million. One million is the goal. The sooner we do it, the better it is. There are elephants dying at an unprecedented rate. We don't have the time to waste. Let us do it. The least everyone can do is please sign the petition please please do guys thank you um speaking of things we can do we, we've talked about education a lot in this broadcast and the previous one with rula lenska who i know is obviously a, a, a friend of yours too and um, she's a patron for our voice she's a patron now. she's a right. fellow awesome. we, we, yeah yeah exactly absolutely and very proudly so as well and she was delighted that i was able to announce you were going to be my guest tonight when we were on our, our broadcast on on tuesday um Tell us about, is there anything that we can do? Is there any way people can help in terms of education in India? I know this might be, again, this is a curveball question. This isn't a plant, this isn't a, a planted question. So there may not be any definitive answer, but if there's something that people can do, if there's ideas we can share, let's share them because I think it's, it's so key. We've, I've seen such wonderful comments tonight as always. And thank you guys again so much for the engagement. I've seen so many people, you know, acknowledging the importance of education and saying that they want to help and get involved. How can we do that we're, when we're talking about a world apart from our, our own? Yeah, that's a really good question. So whoever wants, we, we need volunteers, if I can say so. Uh, and I'll come to the education in just one second. If people can send a, an email to support at vfaes.org. Uh, and I should have given this to you earlier, Dan. I'm sorry. Okay, right now. Yeah, support at vfas.org. Uh, you know, we want people to, uh, you know, to um, help us with the social media because there are more than 4 billion people on the Facebook and there are a lot of Indian people on the Facebook. So, but the key to educating is to, first of all, understand the issues thoroughly, which means you would need to immerse yourself. We want to make sure that we don't disinform people. We will lose our credibility. This is why I always hesitate to just bring somebody on board. They have to go through a training program with me and I'll explain to them what's happening. I'll teach them everything. And um, one of the things that they can do for educating is I'm excited to share Dan. I was telling you about this. Um, we are launching a 26 part documentary series, short documentary series funded by the National Geographic Society, all about Asian elephants. It includes captive and wild uh, challenges that we are dealing with captive and wild elephants. Uh, and so once of course, Nat Geo has the first rights, and once they release it, it's exclusively for the social media. Once they release it, then we can release it. We're also planning to launch a website. There's lots of things underway. The book is underway. This is underway. We need enough content and material, but most importantly, we need people to immerse themselves and understand what to say. Like, for instance, we will not tolerate ignorant comments. We will not tolerate, you know, a cause. Somebody coming, I'm so sick and tired of people posting, oh, I'm so sad. I'm emoji. Yes, I appreciate. I understand that you're sad, but let us do something. There are a few people who come and say, how can we help you, right? right. And of course, I, I'm empathetic towards everybody's feelings. Please understand, I was not I was not trying to be disrespectful, but I'm just saying that emojis or I'm sad or bast bastard or this and that, it just doesn't help the cause. I feel like doing that too sometimes, um, but we, we just need to understand that, you you know, we have to educate them even through the social media, through your comments, informed decisions for which you would need to educate yourself so you would be then capable of educating other people. So before you even venture into the aspect of educating people in India, we need to educate ourselves, which would mean that we need to go through, check out our website. If you go to our website, we have abundance of information that you can look over. We have posted such so much information and we'll be sharing even more in the coming days i hope i answered the question you answered the question beautifully and um i assume you're talking about the the uh, voice for asian elephants website yes yes it is so i'm going to share that with you guys too um and uh 
that's an incredible answer to the question because uh, it does it sounds like we'd planned that in advance because but we we really hadn't it's just i think what's what's coming out of these broadcasts a lot lately is this is the importance of education and you clearly subscribe to that belief from what you've just said it's it's quite incredible that people can get that involved and you'll give them the tools to be educated themselves in order to, to then be able to educate and that's incredible so um i'm gonna just uh pull i uh, basically guys just to point out i put this the um email address on the screen there but as you know by now that's not clickable but i have also put it into the comments section and i can see that a couple of other people have as well very kindly so thank you all for that you'll see that um email address in there support at vfaes.com gina has shared it as well thank you gina dot org dot org great thank you very much yes dot org um so uh, also visit the website which i'm just going to find right now and put on into the comments as well which it's is VFAES. also .org. it's yeah. v-a-s dot org as you can see right there but i'm going to make it clickable for you guys in the comments so stand by for that as well and you you'll see that my comments coming through as food for thought not dan um so you guys have probably already got it you're probably all over it and giles is no doubt all over it as always because he's a legend and we love him. I'd like to thank Giles for the work that he's doing to support this. Um, I haven't met you, and I'd love to friend you on Facebook. So thank you for supporting my friend, Dan. That's a lovely thing to say. I think there's a waiting list for Giles on Facebook because he's so popular. Um, <laughs> and rightly so. Um, so, guys, if you I, – I, I saw a lovely comment, which I shared on screen briefly – um, from a gentleman who I'm I've, this again there's so many comments as always that I can't even I can't even find it now that I'm looking but there was a very lovely comment from a gentleman who quite simply just said wow I've never heard Sangeeta speak before but the sheer passion and, and, and energy and he was in, incredibly impressed and so you guys I know a lot of you already know and love Sangeeta anyone who didn't prior to today will know why I do and why she's literally the guiding light for us in in this cause um, and we couldn't be more grateful and lucky to have you spearheading this for us because you can now see again our aim always is to give hope and inspire you can see what we can achieve because of people like Sangeeta being right there on the front lines absolutely unwilling to give up and that's what that means to to me sangeeta you 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 really are a guiding light for us you lead the way in in this effort i try my best sometimes i i get misled too because you know we always constantly struggle with the ego and the spirit right and we have to just get to a point where we say yeah. okay i'm going to be guided by my spirit so and it takes a lot of discipline and practice but yeah i i would like to I'd like to say that I've learned a lot and that I can share a lot. I, I'm, I'm not so sure yet if I am the guiding light, but I'm being guided and I'm allowing my spirit to guide me. That's all I can say. Which is a beautiful way to put it. And thank you, Susie, who said that it was Roy that made that comment. And thank you, Roy, for that comment. Thank you, Susie, for, for the reminder. Um, I think, Sangeeta, you've just, you've just summarized it beautifully in the sense that, you know, with all of the intricacies and the, 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 the specific granular nature of everything we're dealing with, but ultimately it comes back to that <sighs> breathing and and letting letting that whatever it is for you, you know, whether it's a god or whether it's the universe or whatever you want to attribute it to. I believe, and I think Sangeet has just said the same thing that, especially if your intentions are good, if you take steps towards a goal, absolutely, the universe or God or whatever it is to you conspires in your favor to facilitate that and to, to, to help make it happen in ways we couldn't have possibly imagined or dreamt of. Exactly. So that's, a, that's kind of an maybe an unexpected message out of this broadcast tonight because, again, that wasn't something that we, we talked about before, but I think it's beautiful. Yeah. The universe conspires for your success. It really does. And, and, when, and you, you spoke so beautifully early on when you said, it, you, you know, you, you echoed the words of Martin Luther King, where you say that, you know, hate and anger aren't going to beat out hate and anger. It has to be love and compassion. And um, when love and compassion are, are what guide you, 
I believe the universe listens more closely and, and conspires all the more enthusiastically in our favor, shall we say. Mm, I really absolutely, do. Absolutely. Can I read one paragraph uh, that, that kind of uh, just happened to me this morning? Is it okay? You can, if I you can do whatever you like. Okay, so here in the morning, I'm sitting and I'm journaling and I'm writing this. And I'm saying, I was reading this, this uh, I would say, uh, a guiding book called A Course in Miracles. And it said, until atonement has occurred, divine order is not possible. So I'm asking God, I'm asking, how the hell can I atone anything? Atonement is undoing fear right? Atonement is undoing fear. So I am terrified of what's happening in India. So many elephants have been brutally murdered in, in 15 of them in Odisha alone, and um, many more in so many different states. And all these things are a manifestation of fear, fear of losing their crops, livelihood, and they're implementing these cruel tactics. Then something happened. And as though like I got an answer immediately, I, I just wrote, only love can change their behavior towards elephants. And in order to instill love, we need to spread love. So it was almost like I'm, I'm, I'm going crazy. I'm asking, what the hell are you telling me? Atonement? Are you crazy? Like, I am afraid. Of course I'm afraid. You know, you have said perceptions are illusions. You said perceptions are illusion, but we are living in this physical world and I can see they are murdering. How can you call them perception? Isn't it a reality? Like this is what I asked God or the universe, whomever you call. Two things came out. It said, yes, elephants are leaving this physical realm, but their spirits can never be murdered. I, I began to cry when I heard that. And I said, I want to be with their spirit like now. I don't want to live. And then the second thing that came up was your perception about why people are doing what they are doing is an illusion. I'm like, what the hell? Are you serious? Like you're telling me it's an illusion? And then the voice said, people are doing cruel things because it's a manifestation of fear. And your perception that people are not doing enough is also an illusion. They are meek and they refuse to be harsh as you want them to be. Because I want them to take stringent actions and punish them right now. And the voice is telling, no, 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 no. Some, of, some people in India will not do that. So... So then I'm saying, so then how can I be part of this solution? And then came this major download. You know, what I'm about to say, which is by loving those you think are unlovable and by giving them resources that they need, you can create equality, spread the wealth and generously share knowledge, money, clothing, and just the basic necessities. Just show them that you care and they will care for the elephants. That was a crazy download I had this morning, Dan. Well, I think that couldn't be more apt and beautiful because, uh, and you didn't tell me about that before. It just, it's quite incredible that we talked about being led by love and compassion and that's come to you. And we're talking about education and how we can all help, especially a world away in a place like India where perhaps education isn't even an option for people. Exactly. So they that's gonna be the call to action out of this. Yeah, they don't even have proper toilets. They don't even have flashlights. They don't even have lights. I've been to these villages and, you right. know, we sit on the dining, at the dining table and we eat. They sit on the floor in a, like an aluminum plate, which is twisted and bent all over. And, and I watched this old woman eat it and my heart broke. And I'm saying, Sangeeta, what the hell are you complaining about? These people, they don't even have food to eat. Right. And yes, I know. I know many people will feel, OK, stop producing kids. I agree 100 percent. But we have to help who are already here. Right. They're already here. And we've heard from a lot of our guests. By the way, we and it probably isn't Kiki, but there's a there's a squirrel about to come in. Is it, it is Kiki. <laughs> come on, sweetheart. In you come. I would have felt so bad if she had not come. What a beautiful way to sort of yeah, serenade our... Oh, that is so Come sad. on, sweetheart. Over here. There we go. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kiki. 
<laughs> Kiki has a fan here, a huge fan. Kiki always makes me happy. Kiki always makes me happy. I love Kiki. You know, I think Kiki. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> and she's off. There we go. That was a nice, a nice little visit from Kiki while we were at it. We are blessed. It's almost we're like blessed. the universe is like, okay, I get it. That you guys are uh, all. Yeah. And you know, but you know, going back to what you said, I think it was so beautiful and so important. Um, I know, as always, guys, I only only ever turn the camera on Kiki with the permission of my my very kind <laughs> guests, and Sanky too was very, as keen to see Kiki as the rest of us. Um, and you know, but it doesn't take away from the importance of what we're talking about, which I think I think it needs to be the, one of the calls to action from tonight. Is you know, we let us know. You can let me know, and I'll push it through to my Facebook page, but of course you guys will be following Sangeeta and Voice for Asian Elephants now and you'll be able to see it yourself, but let us know how we can help. We, you know, we can, we can help and we will. Thank you. So will. if it's, if it's, you know, we've, we've heard a lot of, a lot of our colleagues in the conservation sector speaking about the importance of looking after people and yes. you've just echoed that sentiment and it's absolutely true. It's like we've seen in Rwanda. Rwanda has an incredibly successful protection program for the gorillas and it's actually because of the fact that the people are being looked after. So they're incentivized and invested now in the gorillas and it makes sense for everybody. So it's a win-win and I agree with you wholeheartedly. So let us know how we can help and we will. School okay. supplies, we can do some fundraising. We can do, we can do whatever it takes that, that, that you guys need over there. Let us know and we'll help. We'd be happy to. Thank you. That would be awesome. And funny, you should bring up Rwanda because when we were beginning the conversation, I was thinking of, you know, the Rwanda genocide that happened, you know, the Tutsis were killed and, uh, mm. you know, we are seeing the same kind of genocide happening with elephants. But again, when you really draw the parallels, why were the Tutsis killed? Because they were territorial. And here, why are elephants being killed? Because these farmers are territorial and they all want to protect what they have. So the ultimate, um, the root cause of this whole problem is fear. And the right. only way we can dissolve fear is by spreading love and caring and compassion. Beautifully put, as always. And as, as was the entire conversation, Sangeeta. And before I say goodbye to you, I want to let you guys know three dates for your diary. This is, I'm breaking with tradition because I do whatever I want. I don't care. I don't. Um, and that is to tell you the next three guests. And that is, Starting with Tuesday, which is the 23rd, I'll be joined by Val Green. Val, I'm very happy to tell you, is the, uh, the person in charge of the One Voice for Animals UK Appeal, which has been set up very rapidly, very recently, in response to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And that's because, as we've discussed right from the start of, the, of these, in fact, it's partly why this, this, kind, this broadcast series exists, is because these Charities, big and small, are all suffering greatly right now. Every business is, and charities are no exception, and people are simply not able to dip into their pockets and donate when they're furloughed or made redundant. Um, so Val Green, Tuesday, 7 o'clock, join us. I know the Val is watching. I saw a, a comment pop up, and it will be wonderful to introduce you to Val and to talk more about this, um, this wonderful campaign that she's created that gives us all the ability to help local wildlife rescues, charities, and sanctuaries local to us here in the UK. So we're global. We're dealing with India today. It's Africa last week, and it's it's going to be UK wildlife this week. Um, then on Saturday, a week from today, Saturday the 27th, I'll be joined by Liz Tyson, who runs the Born Free USA Primate Sanctuary in Texas. Wow. It's an incredible place that I haven't yet had the privilege of visiting, but it's, uh, as, is, as with everything Born Free, it's wonderful. The animals are in true sanctuary. Liz is going to share some stories uh, with us about monkeys and their and their um, the beautiful stories they have there of monkeys that have, are now living a just like King living in the Shamwari Game Reserve. Monkeys that are now living a, a a life of true peace and sanctuary, thanks to Born Free. So Liz Tyson a week today, and then we're changing the rules again because that's what we do. We're not going to do Tuesday. We're going to do Wednesday. And there's, there's, a, there's a couple of reasons for this. My guest on Wednesday, the 1st of July, is Margot Raggett, my dear friend. She and I have been so fortunate to travel together to Africa a number of times. Margot is the founder of the Remembering Wildlife series, the books that we all know and love. Um, see if I can do this without destroying 
everything <coughs> in my path. This is an example, Remembering Lions. This is Margot. Um, we're currently on Remembering Cheetah. The, 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 uh, the series is Remembering Elephants, Remembering Rhinos, Remembering Great Apes, Remembering Lions, and now Remembering Cheetah. So five books. Margot's done an incredible amount of work, raised an incredible amount of money for a whole host of um, charities and projects supporting all those animals that she covers in the books. July 1st. Margot is my guest. The reason we've done that is because the following Saturday is July 4th, and we're not going to do anything on July 4th because that would be out of order for our American friends who will be celebrating American Independence Day. And um, we're going to do something on Sunday the 5th, and I'll announce that later. But I just wanted to tell you, we're moving to Wednesday and Sunday that week because we make our own rules. Now, Sangeeta Aya, mm -hmm. I adore you. I adore you, and I love you so much. I love you too. And looking at the comments, I'm not alone. Um, there's hundreds and hundreds of comments and I can see hundreds of heart emojis and hundreds of like this from Anne. Thank you, Anne. Um, beautiful messages from Mariana. Katie McCann is saying, awesome as ever, Sangeeta, fantastic broadcast as ever. You've educated so many about your fight, which is so sweet. Thank you, Natasha. I mean, um, Katie, for your support. Yeah, and and you know, even Giles, my dear friend and colleague. Yes, yes, yes. We all thank you so much, Sangeeta. We love you to bits, and we can't thank you enough for all the incredible work you do, the passion that you do it with. And uh, as I said, you're a guiding light, and and with you at the helm, I'm, I know we can achieve great things because you already have, and you have us standing shoulder to shoulder with you right to the very end that means a lot to me and i also want to thank you dan for you know just your guts to stand shoulder to shoulder even when there are so many people who just can't bear this struggle and this pain and suffering and they kind of wither away you know what i mean but you have stuck with me ever since and for that i'm grateful i really admire you i appreciate your presence in my life it's beautiful well, that's very kind of you, and it's very, and it's entirely mutual. And without, as I've said in in many of these interviews, without the people like you for me to shine a spotlight on, this is a completely pointless effort. So, you you give me the reason to do this, and and I thank you from the bottom of my heart, guys. I thank you as well. You you're incredible. I, the, the engagement tonight's been incredible. Um, Sangeeta. Thank you for your incredible, inspiring, empowering words, and we will see you guys on. Tuesday at 7 p.m. Spread the love. Thanks, Dan. Mwah.